Join me today as I show you my secret to my famous potato salad. The ingredients might be shocking, but it's delicious. Alright, the first thing you want to do to make your potato salad is to choose your potatoes. Here I'm using two different types of potatoes. As you can see, these are both on the buttery side. I have a gold version and a red version. It doesn't really matter what potatoes you use here. You just want to be extra buttery, not much starch. Pretty much any finger lean potato will work. I'm starting with some cold water here. And then I'm going to take my potatoes. I've already peeled and sliced these to be about uniform size. I'm going to dump this into cold water. Turn our heat on medium. Let that slowly come up to a simmer. It'll take about 15 minutes total. Just keep testing them with their with the fork until they're until they're tender and cut them immediately. But now let's go ahead and get everything else prepped while we have our potatoes going. All right, first ingredient I have here is some fresh dill. This is maybe a quarter of a packet of dill. Um, if you have dry dill, be very sparingly with it. It is going to be pretty strong. Just going to give this a quick chop real fast. Pretty rough with that chop. And we'll get this put in a bowl and we'll get our next ingredient. And this is just a couple shavings of some green onions. About equal amounts to the dill that we're using. Just get that put into our pan here, into our bowl. This next part is where I loosen people. Um, I'll use some sort of bean in this. Fava beans is what I normally use. Um, this is what I've been using recently. Just don't feel like doing it this time, but what you would do, this is just a snap pea. Just cut the pea down its seam. And then you can pop the individual peas out. Let's just go ahead and put those in here just because I already did it. I still have enough peas to do it. Um, but what I do have laying around the house is just some lima beans. So again, about equal parts of the lima beans will, of the lima beans will go in. These are frozen, fresh frozen, whatever you can find. Okay, and then after there are beans there, I have some of these gherkins. I think this is about 10 of them. Just roughly chopped. Get all these put in there. And then after that, about a tablespoon and a half of some capers. This is three quarters and one and a half. I'm gonna hold back a little bit of juice, just for a little bit extra juiciness in this. There we go. All right, I believe we're all done with the cutting board. I'm not gonna add any more of that stuff. Um, now we're gonna go for the liquids. We're gonna go a little bit light with these. If we need to add more, we will. First thing, whatever mustard you like. Yeah, you can use grape coupon, regular yellow mustard. I'm gonna use some spicy brown mustard. And um, this is coarse ground, so. Go a little bit heavy on this, because I like my mustard. Whatever mayonnaise you like. Add about equal parts some dukes in here that we did the mustard. Now the controversial part is I'm a creme fraiche guy. Um, if you can't find creme fraiche, feel free to just use sour cream, but making creme fraiche is super easy. You just get a little bit of heavy whipping cream and get some unpasteurized, make sure it's unpasteurized or this won't work, buttermilk. Go about 10 to one heavy cream to buttermilk. Let it sit out for a day and that that's creme fraiche. Adds a little bit of tartness that sour cream doesn't add. So we're gonna go about equal parts of creme fraiche. Here we did our mayonnaise. Give this a quick stir, see where we're at on flavor. We're gonna be adding some apple cider, apple cider vinegar to this. We just don't wanna add it too early on because we will start to pickle some of our greens and we don't want that. Also, notice there's no salt and pepper yet because we don't know what the capers and all the pickles did to this, so we don't want to oversalt this. And if we need to add more mayo, creme fraiche, or mustard later, we can. We don't want to make this too wet to begin with. You can see it's still pretty dry. Give this a quick taste. That's pretty salty, so good thing we didn't add any salt. 
Might add some pepper later once we get the potatoes put in. But once the potatoes are done, we can come add to this. We're gonna do some hot sauce later, but you don't wanna do the hot sauce until afterwards. Um, just to make sure you don't over, over spice things by making, by adding the hot sauce too early. So once the potatoes are done simmering, I'll bring it back. Okay, once your potatoes are about this tenderness here, where they barely stick to a fork and just fall off immediately, they're ready to pull. Okay, now we're gonna take each one of these very hot potatoes, cut it into a bite-sized piece, about like that, and throw it into our, our wet mixture. I'll keep doing this, and I'll bring it back whenever I'm all finished. And we can do a, a taste test, see if we need anything, and we'll be all done. Yeah, okay, so all the potatoes are cut up. I'm going to gently fold the potatoes into our wet mixture. They want to overwork because we'll just have mashed potatoes at that point. Damn good mashed potatoes, but still, it's not potato salad, so. So I can already tell here, we're gonna be a bit on the dry side. We need more wet. First thing I'm gonna to add, to add more wetness, is another giant scoop of some creme fraiche. A little bit of wetness from some hot sauce, some Texas Peak hot sauce here. A couple dashes. And some more of our mustard. Again, no measurements here. Make this your own. I'm just providing you a guide, not a recipe. Still a little bit dry. Whatever we have left of this come fresh. And some more of our some more of our dukes. So in my eyes, we're Still a bit dry here. Some people might consider this not dry, but to me it's dry. So another heaping spoon, spoonful of our Dukes. Let's make it two. Some more mustard. And then some more, we're just gonna add some juice from our capers. If some capers fall in, it's whatever, but we're primarily, primarily going for the juice here. Now I think we should be sufficiently moist on our potato salad. As always, I'd recommend letting your potato salad sit for at least 12 hours before serving it. Just put it in the fridge. It lets all the flavors kind of meld together. Yeah. There we go, that's a nice consistency from what I would want. No complaints here, I'm not mad at this at all. That's gonna be absolutely delicious. R real quick before we call it done, just gonna take one of these potatoes and give it a quick taste test. I personally think we'd like to put some more hot sauce in this. But when you're serving a crowd, you gotta think about everybody. Just because I would like more spice doesn't mean everyone else would. You can taste it. It does need one little quick thing real fast. Real fast, I'm gonna add some fresh cracked black pepper to it. It's gonna be great. And just so you guys know, I do actually really love these things. I'm gonna pull out one of these, one of these lima beans here. Granted, like I said, it can be fresh peas, it can be fava beans. Adds nice freshness to your, your potato salad. Best thing you do is just make this your own. If you want to add eggs to it, add eggs to it. I prefer, if I'm going to eat eggs in a salad, it's going to be macaroni salad. Potato salad doesn't need eggs. You don't want hot sauce, don't put hot sauce. You don't want the beans, don't put the beans. You make it your own. Tell me below, what's your favorite way to make potato salad? Or what's your favorite dish to bring to a 4th of July meal? As a side, as a main dish. What would you do differently to this? Just let me know below. Hey, if you guys like this video, let me know below by liking and subscribing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Have a happy and safe 4th of July, everybody. Be sure to check out this other amazing video.